series we're having conversations on Lent and this series is brought to you by the Methodist Church of the BVI circuit and helping us with these conversations has been the superintendent of the circuit Reverend Dr. Keith B. Lewis. Reverend Lewis welcome back. Thank you Dr. Samuel and good to have me back again. Yes. yes. So I have been um, really enthused about these conversations because yes. it, it really, the conversations are about helping us to understand why we do what mm. we do during this season of mm. Lent. And so today, we want to talk about another practice that is normally engaged during Lent. Yes. And this one is arms giving. Yes. Right. Not a term that we hear too much these days. Um, mm. I have to say that when I went and did the research mm -hmm. and it popped up, I was like, arms given? Okay. <laughs> what is that? How does that relate yeah. to our observations of Lent? Of Lent. Lewis? Okay. So, you know, <laughs> I'm always controversial. Yes. And for good reason. <laughs> so, first off, the Christian faith has been monetized. Uh -huh. um, the dominant, the Christian faith always reflect the dominant world civilization. And so we, it's America mm. and everything is traded. Right. So value, including human value, seem to be traded and everything, well, you hear people talk about the prosperity gospel and all of that. Um, so our value seem to be fiduciary values. Mm -hmm. And that is a challenge to the Christian. So the issue of generosity, during Lent, we are called to empty ourselves, emulating our Lord Jesus Christ, who mm -hmm. emptied himself of all but love. Mm -hmm. And so we embrace love. And part of the emptying, emptying has to do with spring cleaning our lives. Mm -hmm. So we've been all the, we talk about ashes and what it represents. We yes. talk about fasting yes. and what that represents. And you could see they all say the same thing, cleaning out our lives. And cleaning out our lives has the social dimension. So without going in all the technical terms, right. uh, almsgiving has its root in, in righteousness and justice. Uh -huh. And it's, it's the underpinning of it is God's socio-economy. Mm -hmm. So the rabbi of the, 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 the Jews, yeah. the, the Jewish rabbis, they recognize and put in place a whole socioeconomic apparatus, their whole kind of economy. So when we delve, when we delve really into the scripture, mm -hmm. you will see things like fasting, you will see um, duties like um, uh, tithing, mm -hmm. uh, you will see about usury, not charging people profit, or what we call today interest. Mm -hmm. You will see after a period of time, maybe 50 years, where you cancel everybody's debt mm. and all of that. So there is a whole economy for God's people. Ah. And um, of course, we have corrupted it. Mm. So it is scarcely understood or practiced or wants to be practiced right. because we are in a world where we have to get, 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 get. Very individualized. And not give, 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 mm. give. Mm. So arms giving, as it says, you know, the words say, Stretched out hands. Stretch out your hand. So the believer is called upon to, to share. Mm -hmm. And not to share from leftovers. <laughs> and that is a word for us in the religious community, in the Christian religious community, where people think that what we give to God is of our leftover. 
Now, given to God is not given to God. Jesus said, at least that you have done to anyone, you have done it unto, unto me. me. Mm -hmm. So when we do grocery shopping, we don't see if we have extra change to give yellow. Mm. We, we provide for her and for all the people who are needed. So God has created an economy for those of us who are industrious, those of us who are enterprising, those of us who are in quotation rich in, mm -hmm. in production, that part of that production is to go to the widows, to the orphans, and to the, the sojourner, the vulnerable groups of people who have no source of income for self-maintenance. So it should become a, a, a regular part of what we do. Of what we do. So, okay. so arms giving is a part of, of that identification and solidarity mm -hmm. with the poor. The poor you will always have with you. And, and so we do not talk about, uh, you know, United Nations program for elimination of poverty. We talk about poverty reduction because there'll be always be an element of people in the community right. who are not that thrifty, who are not that enterprising, who life have dealt a, a hand that is not very beneficial to them. So we have to look, those of us who are quote-unquote blessed by God, part of that blessing is not for us to drink from the saucer. What goes in the saucer should go to the widow, right. not the poor, the orphan. So, so would it be correct then to say that almsgiving is about giving to those in need, stretching out our hands to those who are in need around us, and tithing is about giving back to God. Is, is the the tithing is meant for that too. So you could wrap alms giving and tithing share the ah, same thing. Okay. Because now that you have people who are greedy mm -hmm. and taking the tithe for themselves and their use, when the tithe should be put aside for those who the vulnerable group of the society. Okay. So just like the government in its budget, mm -hmm. we'll have, you have social development, um, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Social Development, is to take care of the vulnerable in the society, yes. the aged. Right. Well, of course, we have all kinds of kind vulnerable of, people right. in the society. Right. So the government in its budget, budget an allocation for them. For them. So okay. we in our own private budget, and more so in our congregational life, mm. have to budget for those, for those who are needy who amongst. are less fortunate. fortunate. And so this Lent, yes. during this pandemic, where so many persons are socioeconomically displaced, displaced. it would seem to me then that if, if we weren't practicing arms given before, this is a good time to, this is a good time to, to get to, into to that practice that. and understand yes. how it relates to our own spiritual growth. Yes taking us closer to God. So given, and Jesus gives us the intrinsic value, it is more blessed. It is, it is a joy. Mm -hmm. It is, it is uh, happiness to, to give mm -hmm. than to receive. Mm -hmm. Think not what someone said that the country is going to do for you. Think of what you can, you do, can do for the, for country. the country. So country. don't think about what you're going to receive from God. Think what you can do with the little in the name of God. Yes. Great. Yes. So as we wrap up this particular conversation, um, do you want to just mention very briefly about how that relates to our being sacrificial during this time? Yes. Well, it is part of the self-emptying. Right. And that is a part of identifying with Christ. So mm -hmm. the sacrificial life, and we will talk about it uh, in, in the, the next, next segment, yes. the sacrificial life it's not just an identifying, um, well, we identify with Christ. The question is, how do you identify with Christ? Mm -hmm. And where is the point of sacrifice? Mm -hmm. um, do, what, what do you, it, so it's not giving up. Um, I, am in, I am a, a minister of the gospel, and I often remind myself, you haven't given up anything. Mm -hmm. You have actually received more from God. Yes. <laughs> so you are not giving up, but in a way, it is a sacrificial life. Uh, I have to forego so many things that I would otherwise mm -hmm. want to um, desire yes. for myself. Yes. But the way of Christ calls me to that. Yes, and yes. that's a good point to end this segment today on. And uh, the question to you, the public, as we leave this segment is, during this Lent, and not just for this period of Lent, 
what are you sacrificing for Christ? He has done so much for us. And we continue to pray that by listening to these conversations, it helps you to get to a place of understanding of how much we are loved by God and how much he sacrificed for us. And therefore ask yourself the question, what am I sacrificing for him today? Yes. See you next time.